Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for Calculus. So let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of this timetable for RDSMA and about online courses and our mobile application. So let's quickly begin with the first question. So the first question is with which country has DPIID established the fast track mechanism for faster resolution of investment cases of Dutch companies operating in India. So here we have the right answer in the question itself that is Netherlands. Okay. It is option A, Netherlands. Both of these countries have um, collaborated to set up this fast track mechanism so that the investment cases or whatever dispute is there in India, so that this dispute can be resolved. So it is in the favor of both the nations. Retail and companies are getting a favorable, uh, you can say, atmosphere in India, and at the same time, India is getting more and more companies in the country. Okay. Not only the dispute resolution, but this mechanism will also help in developing the mutual investment activities. So it will increase the investment, obviously, when you have the clarity that your money will not be stuck in the other country. Obviously, you will invest there. Okay, the next question is where was the national SCST hub conclave organized? So here it was organized in Edna. Now this national SCST hub conclave is a very basic news. This conclave was organized in order to create awareness about the national SCST hub scheme. Now this scheme was launched by the Ministry of FSM and the purpose of this scheme is to Capacity, enhance the capacity of the MSMEs who are the MSMEs which are started by the SCs or the STs or which are operated by them. Okay, so capacity enhancement, promotion of the entrepreneurship culture among the SCST population for enhancing their participation in public procurement. So that is the basic idea of this national CST hub scheme. Now your question is you need to tell me the year of launch of this scheme. The next question is, which agency is implementing Operation Garu? So it is that is implemented by the Central Bureau of Investigation. Okay, CBI is the right answer. So what is the purpose? It is basically to dismantle the drug networks. Okay, whatever the drug network or gang is operating in India, that is the target of CBI under this Operation Garu. Okay, so it's a very simple news, I guess there is nothing much to discuss here. However, on this note, I would like to say some words and after that I will move on. Okay, so guys, I have seen this trend, I have noticed this and read about this as well, that the drug abuse among the youngsters, among youth has increased. And if any one of my students who is watching me right now, if you are an intaker of drug, so I think you should stop now because it is not adding any value to you. Okay, you may not understand it as of now because that is adding to your, you can say, dopamine. But at one point of time when you will have nothing in your hands, then you will understand the price of what you have lost due to the drugs. So if anyone of you is doing that, then stop doing it. However, it is hard. It's easier said than done, but you can try. Okay, Even if a baby step is a step towards your good okay and if you have uh, anybody in your acquaintances if you know anyone in your surrounding who is in drugs then try to persuade that person also not to take it because this is not at all adding any value to his or his family's life okay his or her whatever is the gender now the question number four is which state will develop the world's largest jungle safari park so here so, Haryana is going to develop this jungle safari in the Arabi range, in the Gurgaon and Mu district. So, nothing much again, it's a very simple use. Which state is going to do that? It is Haryana and it is going to be the world's largest jungle safari park. That's the next question is who has been appointed as the new attorney general of General of India? So, here the right answer is. Are Benkert Dominic. Okay. Yu Yu Lalit is an 
present the chief justice of india and he is which number of chief justice basically we have 45th chief justice 55th chief justice so which number is him okay you have to tell me that this is your first uh, question now i hope uh, you must have read about mukul rawdari who was offered this position Okay, before Benjamin Rawdhari, but Rawdhari has rejected the offer, and now our Benjamin Rawdhari has has been appointed as the Attorney General of India. So, Solicitor General of India is still to Shah Mehta. So, these are the two important positions because the Attorney General is the uh, lawyer of the government. The Attorney General represents the government. Okay, and Solicitor General is basically for the help of the Attorney General. And these two are the government posts. Okay, so they are the lawyers of the government. So that is the basic idea of the attorney general and solicitor general. Now he has been appointed for a period of three years. Okay. The next question is who has been conferred the change maker award at the UN SDG Action Office? Okay, so here Srishti Bakshi is the president. Now, Rishi Bakshi is a martyr turned women's rights activist, and she has been given this change maker award at the United Nations SDG, that is Sustainable Development Goal Action Awards. Okay, I hope all of you remember uh, how many goals we have. We have seventeen goals, and on which goal, what target is there? I hope you remember that as well. Okay. So now on that note, quickly tell me that on which SDG goal, or you can say which SDG aims to bring gender equality. This is your question to tell. So here, this award has been given to Srishti Bakshi for confronting gender-based violence and advocating for safe access to public places. Now we have three more categories. In the UN SDG Action Award, and these three categories are Inspire, Connect, and Mobilize. So, in the Inspire category, Masumi Story in Philippines has got the award. In the Connect category, Crispino, uh, sorry, Sitka uh, Sino has got this award, and it is an initiative in Cyprus. And in Mobilize category, Super, uh, super Vipers. Say no more in Ecuador. So these three initiatives have got the award in these three categories, and the uh, this award is important for your examination. So do prepare. Okay. So the next question is, what is the venue of the thirty sixth National Games? So here, guys, Ahmedabad again is the venue. So it is going to be the thirty sixth edition of the National Games, which will be organized in Ahmedabad from September twenty nine to October twelve. Okay. So that is the news. Now, whenever we discuss about any games field, Olympic field, the National Games, first of all, understand this point that not only the international games, national games are also important, like the art, like ours, national games. This is the thirty sixth edition of this game, uh, this tournament. And the mascot of this tournament is Sarvaj. Okay, so what I was telling you, I was telling you that you have to look out for the mask mascots and the themes of particular championship. Okay, so not every kind of championship has a theme or a mascot. Major championships have it. Okay, like you have Olympics, like you have this game, Asian Games. The mascot of the head themes uh, are very rare for certain games. But mascot is there for every big or small game. Like in Commonwealth Games, we have a mascot. Okay. So guys, this is Savaj. Okay, he is the mascot of the six national games. The theme of this is a Bharat Shrest Bharat. Now I hope all of you remember what is. A Bharat Shrest Bharat is nothing but the scheme of the government of India, wherein the government tries to increase the cooperation between the states by 
enhancing the cultural amalgamation between the two states. For example, for a particular year, uh, Mumbai, uh, Mumbai and Maharashtra, Maharashtra and Assam have been chosen as the partners under the Bharat Shrestha Bharat initiative. So what these two states, states will do? Maharashtra will organize the events, the cultural events, the cultural food of Assam and everything in the state. Okay, and Assam will do that for Maharashtra. And in this manner, the population of both these states will get an opportunity to know about the other state. And this is how the government plans to in, uh, boost the national integrity by creating awareness about the cultures of different states. And India is a country of diversity. It is our pleasure, it is our blessing that we have such a vibrant culture in, uh, in our country that we have a lot to explore. So all those travelers, all those uh, you, I would say, enthusiasts who have an interest in the culture, so first try to explore the culture of India because it is really, really amazing. If you see the culture of the Northeast people, if you see the culture of Bengal, if you see the culture of Odisha, so every 10 meals, in a, at every 10 meals, you will see a change in the culture. So that is really amazing. That is something that amazes me. I don't know about all of you because everyone has different interests. But in my opinion, if you are a traveler, then you need to first explore the entire India, not in terms of places, but also in terms of culture, the practices that these people have. Okay, now coming back to the news. So two new union territories, that is Bhagda and another, another Indian permanent. I hope all of you know that these two were merged and now we have only eight union territories. What is the capital of this union territory quickly that means the section? Okay. So these two union territories are going to take participation in this game for the first time. Obviously, they have been created new, so it is for the first time they are going to participate. The next question is, who is the author of Ambedkar, a live book? So here, Shati Karu is the right answer. Now yesterday only, Mahatma Gandhi's birth anniversary was celebrated. So here we have this book coming up. So it's a very, I would say, an opportunity for us to discuss a bit about Ambedkar, Gandhi and Shasti. Because it was the Shasti and Gandhi JMV. Yes, Malar Mahatma Shasti was also born on that same day. Okay, so if you want to discuss anything about the ideological clashes of Ambedkar and Gandhi particularly, you are welcome to mention it in the comment section below. We can have a crisp uh, chat or you can say discussion, but that will be restricted to the comment section because you guys are new to there. You guys do not reply to the questions that I ask and this is not going to uh, continue guys. I think you all should Try to mention your answers in the comment section below because in this manner, first of all, you will learn something new because when you go to the comment section, you will see the comments of other people who have answered the questions and my reply to their answers, whether they are right or they need any kind of correction in their answer. So that will also enhance your knowledge base. Okay. And secondly, the questions which I ask, the conceptual questions, if you try to answer on them, your thinking process will never. Okay, so mention the ideological clash between Ambedkar and Gandhi in the comment section below precisely because we are discussing this question. Okay, so the ninth question that we have is Nikhil, Nikhil Kamath has secured the first rank in the IAFL wealth, Harun India 40 and un, for, under self-made rich list 2022 with a net worth of 17,500 crore. He is the founder of which so here is the right answer. So here guys, we have many lists released by many organizations like Fox also released the list. Then we have Bloomberg Billionaires Index, then we have this Harun India list, then we have this Ali list. So this is again a list which highlights or which lists the people who are under 40 or the at the age of 40 and who have become the uh, billionaires, okay, who have become the rich people. So, Nikhil Kamath is at the first position with 17,500 crore worth of net worth 
Thank you so much for watching this video.